to understand the Unreal documentation for it. But this uses a pivot painter, and if you don't know what pivot painter is, it's basically just a way in which you can store your object's pivot rotation data, like a pivot point, within its UV, which allows you to basically um, build out something like this. It's actually what was used for Fortnite, is what got my interest in it initially. So if you've seen uh, building systems out there that are like Fortnite building system, the majority of them use vertex color, which I, it isn't the worst thing ever. I actually have a project where I did that, um, and I'll pull it up. <coughs> They're not the worst systems ever, but that's not how um, that's not how Fortnite did it. Is is my only issue with with that. So if you go out there and and look for like tutorials on Fortnite shaders, you'll see a lot of this type of way to do it, which is just, I mean, it works, like I said, I mean, it kind of works. It gets the idea across at least. But basically, oh shit. Oh, there we go. That's why. Yeah, so the way I set this one up, it goes all the way down, I guess, my bad. But most of them will kind of work like this, where you have a, it, it's a similar idea, right? It works off vertex color. So you store a vertex color in each of the objects, and then you can then take those vertex colors and break down a shader that it applies the world offset based off the vertex color. That gets you close. That That's like a, a very similar idea to what Pivot Painter is, but Pivot Painter is kind of like, it adds another dimension. It's almost, I, I like to think of it like a vertex uh, animations, vertex based animations. It's like, they're very similar to other techniques like this too, but they also have a totally different workflow. Like it's, it's a similar idea in my mind. I mean, it's like comparing potato to potato. It's similar, but it's not the same. Yeah, these are really simple ones too. I can actually, I might make this one open too. Um, but this is all; these are all being controlled through vertex color. So like their shaders are pretty pretty simple. So like this one is literally just going up. So in this rotation <coughs> parameter, I basically just set the B axis to one. And that masks out that masks out like everything else going on in here. That's the only like big thing you have to know if you're using vertex color is that you have to be able to control that height. And like the easiest way is just by making everything else zero and making the height one. And then all your transformations that you do can just at the end be scaled to just height. That's what I do. But yeah, I mean most of these aren't too crazy. Also, I am super sick, so I apologize for the uh, horrible voice. I was planning to do a tutorial this weekend, but I said I'd do one, so here I am. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just I think I might have just broken that one. But yeah, so so that's vertex color. <coughs> that's vertex color, and that's how most um, like Fortnite shaders are done. But that's not actually how they did it. You can go out to GDC's vault too. Yeah, I think it's on GDC's vault, and I might even link this, but there's a uh, documentation on how Fortnite built their shaders from like 2014 or 16, I believe. And they used all Pivot Painter 2.0. This is actually part of the reason why the Piv Pivot Painter 2.0 was developed. So here's my intro. <laughs> That's just the intro to Pivot Painter. It's, it's pretty fucking complex, honestly. So I just started out by making a quick little object in Houdini. So th this is how I made the hex thing. I can just remake it real quick so you can see what I did. But I took a tube. <sighs> what is a tube? And when it's a polygon, it's just a collection of points. So if you take these columns down to <coughs> six, you basically get a whatever gone. Can't remember what one this one would be called, but like heptagon or something. I don't fucking know. Octagon. I think it's an octagon. No, octagon's eight. Anyways, heptagon. I think I think it's a heptagon. 
my math days are killing me. And then I just do a copy to points. But I actually have to fuse this because this is an issue I noticed. It's an issue out of Houdini in general. Like their geo, just it's really great for films. But you gotta you gotta clean the shit up for games. <coughs> and then I just run it, run it through a fuse because otherwise, um, when we take it through the, the later steps, uh, the the top and the bottom of this geo will separate from the sides <coughs> because Houdini doesn't natively have these fuses. Which I imagine is because of something to do with polys or something. There's a, there's a reason I'm sure. I'm sure they're not just doing it out of spite or something. Um, okay. And then yeah, I just need a sphere and set this to polygon. I don't want it to be polygon mesh. If you look at it, these this is actually like how oh, what is this? I can't remember what they call it, but th th this type of sphere has a name. It's different from a polygon mesh sphere. <coughs> I, I prefer these spheres for blocking stuff out a lot more. They're a lot more fun to work with. Okay. And we don't want to use transform point orientation. And we want to orientate ourselves in the z-axis. As weird as that is. Wait, right? That's what I did last time. Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. Huh. Oh. So we do want to transform using point orientation. Okay. So the big thing is Z axis, transform using point orientation, and then they'll just actually attach correctly. I want to shrink down this height a little bit. This one seems so off. Huh. Oh, uh, I think it's because of the fuse. Yeah. There we go. So yeah, just make sure your tolerance on the fuse is done later, probably, is what I do. Okay, so now we have all of these uh, <coughs> octo heptagons or whatever they are, I don't know. And here's our, I just had this on earlier, sorry, it's just normals. You can click this, and that turns on your normals, you want to check them. It can be pretty helpful for debugging stuff, which is what I was doing earlier. <coughs> then I just want to do an output, which is just kind of like a good habit to put yourself in. You can either do a real output or you can do a null. Yeah, null. Output. Oh. I tend to do the null output way if I'm like in the middle of a project and outputting, but uh, that's me. Well, I mean like if I have like a high poly at the top and then I'm doing like all these things to get it to low poly and then I want to bake the high poly on the low poly. I'll do an output of the high poly right off the bat, and then do everything for the low poly, and then I'll put the low poly too. Through a null, usually, if I'm using multiple. If I'm only doing one, I use one output, like full output. There's not a difference, really, between these two nodes. I mean, other than the output index. But I don't really ever flex with that anyways, so. Okay, then we can just export our FBX. Yeah, export render factors on or not. I just called mine hex. <coughs> <coughs> Set your OBG to your folder, your sphere, or whatever. And then where you want to export it to. So I just put it to my desktop. Okay. So then you're ready. There. Okay. So now we're going to be in 3DS Max. And I'm going to load in. So if you go to your <coughs> um, UE4 420 or 418 or 419, whatever you have download, you'll you'll see engine, extras, and then in here we have <coughs> Fibre Painter 2.0. There's better ways 
to set this up so that you can just call it from within 3ds max but for the sake of the tutorial I'm gonna make it quick because there's other tutorials that help you with that and so I just click this and drag it in and now it's it's going it's running sorry about having OBS up to check the check yeah I think it's working yeah okay um so now we have this pivot painter tool and this was created by Jonathan Lindquist at Epic Games by the way like th there are two people who I would absolutely recommend following as much as you can and that's Ryan Brooks and Jonathan Lindquist um there's a lot of other unreal people too I can't name them off the top of my head and I apologize <coughs> But those are the two big ones, I'd argue. Okay. So now we want to go to our desktop and we want to bring in hex. Uh, import file. I usually. Frick. What the hell? Ugh, because I imported it here. Whatever. Try to center it as best as you can. I know it's hard. It's not really that important anyways though. Because there's ways to center it. And yet again, there's tutorials and shit for that. But this is just a tutorial for this. Okay, so we can just click on it and then detach selected model elements. <coughs> and so that'll give us where we had just one model before and now we have 42. And so that's each of our individual elements on this mesh. And then we can just go to update. So now we have a collection here. We don't need detached elements based on penetration. This is more for uh, complex geo. Okay. And then I usually just go mesh here. I don't even think I use this honestly. I don't. Yeah, I don't think any of this is really used because we don't need any new pivot points. We already have the pivot points we need. Yeah, all of our pivot points are already configured. And they're fine. So now we're just going to recreate our bounding boxes. <coughs> which is just this one process selected objects. And then we're going to go process selected object hierarchy. Make sure I have them all collected. They're selected. And then process selected object hierarchy. Okay. So now I'm going to go into here. Little folder I call, I mean, called toot. And we're going to select this and save. And that's just going to bake out some, some little images. So if you can see in here, um, shoot, I already have them built. Whatever. Uh, I'll just recreate them, right? That was my bad. I already have one set in here. Okay. But yeah, so if you come in here, if you come into like a an app like Photoshop, you can see what it is. This is all it is. It's just color data for each of these channels. But it's very important. I know it sounds weird. It's very good data though. Like vertex shaders are very different. It it's a very unique viewpoint you have to come from. <coughs> okay, so I'm just gonna add a new folder. Call it hexy. Because this is a hexy model, man. A lot of hexes. Oh, are these he hexagons? These aren't hexagons. I'm pretty sure they're not hexagons. So I'll import this and this. And this is just, um. Yeah, I'll explain it in a second, actually. Let's do it right now. Oh, desktop. Hexa. Oh, wait. I think I have to export the model itself, too. <coughs> Uno boss. Okay. So now, export to desktop new hex dot I don't think I have. The, I don't. I don't believe I have to change anything in the base editor. It should just export correctly, as far as I know. Watch me be wrong though. The only big thing is, is that you have to make sure that you combine meshes. If you don't combine meshes, you bring in 
uh, 42 different meshes, right? So yeah, combine meshes. And then I didn't up the scale in any of these programs. So we're just gonna hit uniform scale, import uniform scale up by 100 too. And make sure you have combined meshes done. Okay. So let's kill this one off. And now we have this guy, but nothing's happening, and nothing should be happening, right? Uh, okay. So now I need to copy. Control C. <laughs> Hopefully that just does it. It should. Yeah. So this is <coughs> the same shader, but. Oh, it's just more spread out. And all this shader is. Oh, I don't really want to go through this whole shader. So if you go into. Epic's content examples 420. There's going to be a Pivot Painter 2.0 building. I'm just gonna pull this up. This is the easiest way to go through it. I I, I would do a more in-depth rundown on the shader, but I'm too sick right now. My apologies for that. Um Yeah, here we go. Pivot Painter 2.0. And then there's this little building. This is this is what started my hunt. So there's this little building, and this build house shader is all you need. This is the shader I'm using right now. I'm actually gonna take these because I don't have anything. So and I didn't UV this, so there's no textures. I'm gonna I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a few seconds too, actually, because I, I UV'd the last one really quick. Okay, go back to my project. Now that I explained kind of where the idea of that all came from. Yeah, actually, I'm probably going to do that because I have to explain how to blend your normals. Um, anyways, so first, when you start, you're going to have these two. Um, they're connected kind of like this, right? This node goes to here, yada, yada. So now we're going to replace those with ours. And you can actually just make that a, a variable within your overall shader if you're doing a lot of these, and then just uh, switch it out in the instance. Pop. There you go. So you just made something build itself, right? And basically, the difficulty in Pivot Painter is really making it do exactly what you want it to do. That's the hardest part. And I've I still been working on some different techniques for that. So I plan to re release more tutorials as I get more figured out for this type of workflow. Uh, I'll also just explain this real quick too. So if you have normals on your model, like this other one had normals already done. So I already had like a kind of shader and everything built up for this, for the normals and everything too. Um, and if you do that, you just have to use <coughs> this blend angle corrected normals. 
because normally you have this uh, new tangent space protects normal node that goes into your normals sort of get that to work with your actual normals you just have to plug in your normal map to the additional normal and blend angle corrected normals take this put it into your base normals and then export it that as your result to your normal and that works pretty well actually in my experience it looks good I think <coughs> yeah I'll go through the UVing process real quick just because it seems interesting and it's pretty quick to do okay I want to just auto, yeah, I'll just auto UV. Uh, set view, UV viewport, yeah. So basically, uh, all I did was I just took um, my model, put in this auto UV, and then it's just the one, right? It's just this one tube. It's not the whole, it's not the whole set of them. It's just the one all it is and I do that <coughs> because it allows me to get more value right like unless I'm actually going to be affecting each of these individual colors like I want to color one tile and not color the rest through vertex colors or something later on there's no reason like unless I'm changing the material there's no reason to make different UVs for each individual one I can just use one and pack it which is what I did and then we go to your output you have this. And then you can take that into substance and you know, do all your modeling or your texturing and substance is where I did it. But <coughs> yeah, I hope that helps. I mean Pivot Painter is a different thing to work with. And I plan to make better content for it. I was holding off on this tutorial for a while because I, I still am not super good at it. I mean there's a lot of weird stuff I've been trying to mess with it. The biggest thing is once I get my bird flapping correctly. I'll make a <laughs> tutorial for that too, because that's a pretty fun one to get working. Well, thank you for watching. If you're interested in it, leave a like, subscribe, I appreciate any help. Let me know what you're thinking about the tutorial and if you need help. Thanks.